so anything as i said anything and everything is possible in the world outside anything and everything why the world is subjected to change and what is the goal of the eastern wisdom to know three things clearly what is the exact nature of real self or what i am i don't have an identity crisis Second, what exactly is the nature of the world outside? The world consists of people, place, time. Third, and if there is some existence or the supreme consciousness, then what is the nature of that? So if I know with 100% conviction, this is what I am, this is the nature of the world and this is the supreme existence then i can know how to think speak and act in the world and that results in that is what the awakening is then we live into that awareness now i have an acute pain what should i do i'm 80 years old I am subjected to change, <laughs> provided if I take care, I can prevent to certain extent. Now I will ask the artificial intelligence to change my face so that I keep on looking young. Internally you know who you are. But I don't want to accept. So there comes the identity crisis. There comes the identity crisis, my friends. Remember. We don't want to accept the true nature of the world. True nature. Body is subject to change. I will not talk in detail. I'll talk in uh, the evening session because somebody asked me a question but I will pick up only one part of it to show you how important it is to keep on listening and learning contemplation and reflection to, to find out that consciousness which is not at all affected and dictated by your mind living in delusion. Clear? So now what that gentleman wrote to me. I receive all the kinds of email, good email. Every good mail is good for me. It's a part of learning. <clears throat> if everything I am experiencing is false, I have been repeating, delusion is false. So that group has yet to reach to uh, understand what is delusion. But I can make out that gentleman is contemplating and reflecting. But why, it, why a constant listening and learning is required until our mind transforms? That is the example. And you have to answer this question. The question is, if everything I'm experiencing is false, is going to end, what is the point of being alive in the first place? What is your answer? How do you answer? So it is the Eastern wisdom that makes you understand from where this question comes. With a disclaimer, in US, I would say simple answer, but that is not really an answer. Then why you are living? <laughs> why you are asking me? It is your life. Why are you living there? So your mind changes the track. And that is also a delusion. Is it not a delusion? Why are you are asking this question to me? It's your life. And we don't recognize this delusion. And then we continue to question and we continue to suffer. 
So I said with a disclaimer, then why you are, why you are alive? And if I say that, you will say, no, you are inspiring me to commit suicide. No, I'm not doing that. Again, I'm saying, if everything I'm experiencing is false, is going to end, what is the point of being alive in the first place? The track of my thought process is different, is changed, which is rationalizing the delusion and the suffering in my life. I accept, I accept what I accept. I accept suffering as a reality. And I have yet to understand what exactly is false. It has yet to be assimilated in my intellect to give rise to a new level of awareness. Are you getting it? That is, that is how the teacher makes us understand. Now another part, again, again I'm reading it. If everything I'm experiencing is false and is going to end, what is the point of being alive in the first place? Can you discover the delusion here in this statement? Can you discover the delusion in that statement? If everything is going to end, so what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the world outside, including the body, mind, intellect, and ego, which is in constant flux. It is constantly changing. So my mind is not focused on finding who am I. My mind is raising the doubt and the question, whatever is changing is me and mine. And that will take a time. It, it will definitely take some time before we really change. That is why our master says, Constant listening and learning is required. Otherwise, mind will return to its past memories and ignorance. Let me give another example. <coughs> you know shift and delete in the computer? We all know. We have all been working on the computer. If you want to delete any data or information, you shift on the keyboard, you shift and delete. It's very easy. It's very easy. Uh, but you have deleted some information which brands you as a terrorist, then FBI will come and retrieve the data. Why I said so? You intellectually understand today in a session that, oh, I have understood the delusion. So intellect says I have deleted it. But the mind can retrieve the information in daily life and can cause you suffering. Did I compare rightly? <laughs> No, FBI or CIA can retrieve any information which you have deleted 10 years ago and still they can retrieve those information. Why FBI? You know, even Dennis can retrieve those information. He's an expert. Now he can retrieve the information from your computer, not from your mind. <laughs> Pay attention. <coughs> To understand we are talking of the delusion. We think that, you know, okay, I have done, I have deleted. Now we are good friends. But my strong likes and dislikes continues deeper in the deeper layers of my mind. It has already accumulated those impressions. We are talking of that from where the delusion takes shape.
rationally we all are talking we are all communicating at this time there is no question of delusion i told you delusion comes from the ignorance and ignorance causes the suffering in my life but the delusion is still there at the deeper layers of the mind i say that you know i have deleted it i have deleted my strong lives in this life Delusion may not remain on the surface, but it can come, it can return any time with a greater force. And it happened. I don't want to name, but I just give an example. I told you I receive normally 50 or 60 emails. Sometimes I don't respond, sometimes I respond in one word, sometimes I force the person to rethink. And sometimes I respond the way it appears that I'm reacting. Why? We are not going to change, even after years of the practice. What to do? In those situations, they will return. Those impressions will return. First, keep calm quiet watch your mind it should not fall and dictate you and this can only happen by constant and regular practice preston already asked me the question then we have to do it throughout the life no until you recognize that consciousness is there which is irreversible it is not at all affected by anything whether you have those impressions deeper inside your mind or whether the world is changing outside. It doesn't mean that you like pasta, you don't go and eat pasta. You eat pasta. If it is not available, you are not affected. I believe you all are getting it. You all are seekers. So the first thing is to maintain that calm and the poise. Second is Especially in relationship, you can say sorry, even if your fault is not yours. Why? You can, because your mind is clear. You are not being dictated and guided by the delusion. Oh, no, no, you have done this. Oh, no, I'm sorry. With all your softness and gentleness, you say sorry. But ego says, if I say sorry, which I have not done, that ego is the delusion. That is why we should say sorry. So we are checking ourselves. Second step. Third. Be firm in the intellect. This is my understanding. What is my understanding? That I'm out of my strong likes and dislikes, which are which causes the delusion. So we are firm in the intellect. You are not being deluded. Take an example of two friends of yours with whom you have good friendship. But these two friends, these two people have their strong dislikes against each other. This is what happened. I'm not going to tell you the name. So one person is criticizing other five reasons. Second person is criticizing the first one, six reasons. When it happened a couple of years back, it resurfaced because they were, mind, my mind at the subconscious level was looking for an opportunity to prove. And I was made a scapegoat. Guinea pig. Not to be affected. So, third fourth people will say you are to blame accept the blame i said okay i accept the blame come on can you both go together now it is a point of no return so then obviously you are crazy you are in delusion you are in delusion that is how we live in our relationship no no but if you reach to that higher state not people with you, people with you change. 
How many people changed in front of Jesus? Buddha was stoned. Every enlightened people were abused. Who are you? Why it happens? The world is constantly changing. Those people who are not living into the wisdom, they are living in the delusion, are bound to say something, bound to blame and complain. You live into that state. This is an explanation of my master used to say, the elephant walks on the road. Sangeeta, do you remember? It's a very tough dog barks, let them bark. Nothing happens to the elephant. Not only because not only because of the ego, but because of the firm resolve and firm understanding who you are. You are clear, you have no biases, you have no suffering, you have no anxiety, the intellect is steady in that wisdom. Otherwise, the deluded thinking will distort the reality. It will take the side of one. Outdated assumptions will misguide your mind. Your cognitive biases will cloud your judgment. Your personal illusions impede your performance. You will have a dysfunctional mindset. Oh, I have been practicing with you for so many years and still I have a stress. You are responsible for it. I am not. You did not remove your delusion. You simply deleted the file and you don't know how the mind can retrieve that information and can return to the surface. Simply, it is possible, you know, shift and delete, find more space. It is very easy in computer. It's not easy in this com living computer. I have to continue the practice. I have to test it. I have to examine it. Everything is good in meditation. I was totally absorbed. But I have a lot of pain in the body. It comes from that deeper layer. Are you all getting it? I believe so. Say yes. That is the meaning of bhajagovindam bhajagovindam. <laughs> bhaji govindam bhaji govindam listen to it you know what this gentleman made a statement what the statement she, uh, he made if everything I am experiencing is false as per your statement and uh, is going to an end what is the point of being alive in the first place? Why you are you asking me? First, why you are alive? Can I give you the wisdom in it? You are alive to ask these questions to remove your delusion. So you must be alive. At least your intellect has started reflecting on it. If you are not alive, you cannot ask these questions and cannot remove your delusion. <laughs> are you getting it? People don't ask these questions. People ask these questions. You have grabbed your money. I will teach you a lesson. You see the delusion? Journey is a very subtle. Are you getting it? Did you get it? You are alive to you are alive. That is why you asked me the question. 
If you are not a lie, how can you ask the question and how you can get the clarity? Think, my friend. Master, our master says it is only an understanding. But until we become the highest level of a seeker, we continue to do the practice. What is that practice? Remember, recall, repeat, bhajago vindam. Bhajago vindam. Bhajago vindam is a love for the existence. I should instantly recognize, oh, this is the mind is asking this question. What is the fuzz of being alive? I exist. I am alive. That is why my mind is asking a question. Look at this. This is Bhaj Govindam. Are you getting it? I believe so. Say or say yes. <laughs> I'm asking the question. Oh, that is what the main thing is. Are you getting it? You live into that awareness. Without awareness, you cannot ask this question. Oh, let me find out who, who is that awareness. In that presence of the consciousness, I'm asking the question. Oh, the mind is putting me into the delusion. Why am I alive? And you instantly remove the mind. Now gets a shock. But this can only happen, I told you. You have to remain calm. I'll repeat it in the next lesson, next session also in a different way. That is why we say we need a consistent and regular study and contemplation and practice. Bhajago Vindam, Bhajago Vindam, Bhajago Vindam. So in the midst of all my activities, thoughts, relationship, pain, suffering, I see Bhaj Govindam is constant. So I'm guiding the mind to one absolute reality. That is why I'm doing Bhaj Govindam. Not because of any other reason. Not because of religious reasons. No, not at all. Leave that. I have a stress, oh, but behind there is a peace. Your mind reminds you. No, when I see you, I'm in stress. Mind goes back to the deleted file, it returns again. <laughs> it's only a matter of awareness. But it will only come if you live into that highest level of a seeker. Otherwise, it will, you will never be able to remind yourself. You know, these two friends. They made me the guinea pig. Oh, I, may, I, I became guinea pig many a time. So it's, a, it's not a problem. I will leave you if you go with him. Leave me. When I met you 15, 20 years ago, <laughs> what thought should come to your mind? Fast forward. <clears throat> I think everybody I feel, if I assume, it may be a false assumption, everybody is 40 and above. Let me add fast forward 100 years. None of us will be here. <laughs> Turning the virtual session. None of us. Fast backward 50 years. Why I said so? The world is constantly changing. It is temporary. All relationships are temporary. Now I see in the light of that fact and the truth. I don't want to talk to you. Thank you very much. I will plead you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please let us talk. But if you don't want, thank you. But 
your mind remains in calmness. That is very important in our journey. If the mind doesn't remain calm, we respond by reaction and anxiety and anger. Then there is a problem. And that is the delusion part, that is, <coughs> and there comes the distinction between <coughs> fool, wise, and mad. Simple example at the physical level, mad is deluded by the physical beauty and the lust. <coughs> wise who is aware of it. Fool, one is attached to the worldly pleasure. So we are talking of that fool, Bhaji Murhumati, Bhaji Govindam. So in the very first line he says, O fool, you are suffering because you are attached to the pleasure in the world that is constantly changing. That is constantly changing. So what I said that <clears throat> the chain of the thoughts which our masters have given to us, our mind has assimilated it. Mind is not changing the track. How the mind changes the track, you already know. I have told you. It's deep impressions, deeper layers of that information is still available in the mind until that changes. But simply by shifting and shift and delete, it will not work. When FBI can retrieve any file from your computer, what you have deleted <coughs> 10 years. Even, you know, if, even if you're writing, Dennis knows better. <coughs> even if your hard drive is uh, uh, broken to a certain degree, still they can retrieve that information. And our mind keeps that information not only for from this birth, but from many births. Even the sign says <clears throat> that at present you are listening to me and you are listening to the other sounds in your room. They are subconsciously being accumulated and stored in your mind. I am saying I am sorry. <clears throat> you boost your ego because you sad me sorry. Another delusion. And that prevents me to change my behavior and attitude in my life. Because I am not a seeker and then it continues the journey. Today I like you for a couple of years, now I dislike you, I stop talking to you and something happens to my mind after a few years, again I start talking to you. And if I remind you, you become angry again. <laughs> Is it, does it not happen? My intellect is steady with the knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is awareness. What is this awareness? It is knowledge is consciousness. Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Brahm. We say that consciousness is of the nature of the knowledge. <clears throat> the mind takes over because of the delusion and we are gone.
but why the entire gossip it is because goal is the same then i discover the permanent peace happiness love truth and wisdom in my life when i see intellect is steady it intellect is steady with the knowledge now that knowledge is not going to change <coughs> what is that knowledge i discover that consciousness behind the constant changing nature of the mind then what it is an irreversible process you enjoy your life No, no, I will not say that. Let us close your eyes. I have said enough. Uh, now I should say something that you can easily digest, you know. Sometime our mind cannot digest and you will react. I don't want you to react. Eyes are closed and being comfortable. Being comfortable. You already know it, what it means. Sarvesham Swastir Bhavati. My friends, pay attention. Your body is comfortable, at ease. You are aware, that is a knowledge, that is awareness. Being carefree is also, <clears throat> in the beginning, after listening the talk, it is easy to maintain that awareness, provided you heard the talk and the principles clearly with a conviction, it is very easy to be carefree. But if it is not, then go back to the previous lessons where I explain how to be comfortable and carefree. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham swastir bhavatu May there be happiness for all. So you should, your knowledge is there. What is that knowledge? Why we are doing it? So that the mind does not retrieve the files and does not dictate over it. How? You go by the knowledge. Happiness is the essential intrinsic nature of every being on this earth. That is how the existence is made of. So what is going to happen? The mind returns with a force. No, no, I don't like this guy and I like this guy. So that should dissolve in your mind. Still you keep the distance. What it, there is no issue. I believe you are getting it. That state of awareness is required. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. May there be peace for all. There are one million reasons to get upset outside in the world. But you are not upset. <clears throat> we have a choice. Animals do not have a choice. The mind dictates over the intellect. Never will not happen. Intellect takes over the mind, it will instantly happen. But it should happen all the time. That is why we are continuing the journey. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam May there be completeness in me. And that completeness is what the real self is. Real self is made up of consciousness of the nature of peace, happiness, love, truth and wisdom. Because it is unchanging reality 
hence it has to be complete in oneself whatever is changing cannot be complete why because they are made up of the parts car body mind intellect ego thought process see that i know i'm none of them sarvesham mangalam bhavatu sarvesham mangalam bhavatu sarvesham mangalam bhavatu may there be auspiciousness for all auspiciousness i've already or you can say there should be a grace and the blessing should fall on everyone because the existence is made up of the grace <clears throat> so in that state now now we will continue not only to purify the mind you know that we are so the mind will retrieve those information and during the breathing it doesn't stay that is the goal of our breathing and that is why we have couple of things to be considered the body remains in the state of steady and comfort you are looking deep inside the forehead in the space at a point and there you look at a point in the space and you are dropping om shanti that is one part of the mind so you are checking at every moment where the mind you are what are you doing follow this so that is a command a very gentle command you are giving om shanti and then continue to start breathing from the chest short and quick gentle breath from the rib cage You are breathing into the chest and you remember every time you inhale the chest expands and every time you exhale the chest contracts. Continue breathing and also experiencing the changes that is taking place. At the same time, you are also aware of the resistance. That resistance comes from the deleted, the remains of the deleted file. I believe it will make a sense what I'm talking about remains of the deleted files which we think we have done it but we it is not easy and that is why we are continuing the journey <laughs> Continue, my friends, continue.
continue breathing <clears throat> but continue om shanti continue to be steady steadiness in the body that means you are extraordinarily aware at this moment and in that field of awareness the mind is not able to dictate over you and you succeed that is exactly we are learning And now stop this breathing and also the mantra. Just pay attention to the flow of the breath. And <clears throat> experience the changes. Register the resistance if your mind has created but continue to pay attention to and now is the time Om Shanti, drop inside the forehead and start breathing from the belly. Let a longer breath. So expansion and contraction of the belly continues. And at the same time, Om Shanti continues. On a given day, you will discover that the mind accepts the breathing and it flows through your nose naturally. You will also discover that during the breathing, the flow of the breath in both the nostrils are equal. That is a wonderful state of awareness. So you have to pay attention to that flow of the breath, even whether you're doing the fast breathing or the slow, the flow of the breath is almost equal. What that means? No resistance is there. You can recognize. Yes, I'm also removing the remains. <clears throat> FBI and CIA now cannot trace any files.
and stop this again bring your awareness on the flow of the breath at the same time while you register the memory of any resistance and at the same time other experiences because that now that memory lives in your mind instead of the memory that is full of the dualities conflicts and delusions so that your mind is motivated easily I believe you are getting it what I'm saying and now Om Shanti deep inside the forehead and start breathing continue to say Om Shanti and start breathing long breath through both the belly and the rib case again check both the flow of the nostril is equal if it is not equal it's okay <laughs> Long, deep in the hissing breath. Long, deep, hissing breath, Om Shanti continues, the body remain in the state of steadiness. and leave it allow the breath to be normal and check the flow of the breath and i already told you the which flow has the less flow pay attention there i believe you all remember that the one thing is the listening in a live session through many ways we understand the mind and the delusion. Sometimes the mind gets absorbed if the flow of the breath is equal and you may experience some sensation, energy movement along the spine and in the body. So now you see, we, we now understand why it is happening. We understand why it is happening. And in that state of awareness, move the mind inside the cave of your heart, 
visualize or a thought image of a tri equilateral triangle pointing upward moving the mind on each side of the triangle looking at the side and dropping Om Shanti whether you move the mind slowly and say Om Shanti every that is what the state that is what the mood of the mind Sometimes the mind is full of the joy. So it will take some time to move the mind on the side of a triangle if the side is even the smart. It moves so slowly. <clears throat> As if it wants to explore each and every dot that makes the side. So you are not doing it mechanically. You follow the mind Om Shanti or sometime even Om Shanti you drop it in a quick succession that is also the point of awareness the mind can function speedily gently for a longer period depending on the mood so we need not to worry we need not to push and force And when you see the clockwise, anti-clockwise movement sinking, that is the moment you sing mentally. Um, this time it is you're doing the opposite. You're pushing the mind inside the cave of your heart through the triangle by saying. Um, and you are saying Shanti, my stay there, Shanti. And you are kind, consciously aware of the self-absorption. You are aware there is an absorption. That is the key. And when you see the mind breaks that absorption, you return again, sink and go back. <coughs> My friends, I tell you, it is the knowledge which you, later on you can say it is the awareness and attention. When you have a clarity and conviction, <clears throat> means that is the knowledge. 
and that understanding prevents the mind to fall into delusion. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. Lift your Buddha palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms, we'll share our experiences. <coughs> and if you have any question, you can ask me, how are you, Stephen? I'm good. Thank you very much. A um, couple standout moments uh, in, in that meditation. I um, the last several weeks during the my breathing and um, the triangle process. I, um, every day I, I'm just very very cold. My my body temperature is just dropping, and so it, I laugh because today I decided to you know wear pants and long sleeve shirt and be prepared for the coldness and then I was just absolutely warm. So <laughs> it, it went in the opposite direction um, and I found it to be funny. So um, I, I laughed I, I laughed in my, in my mind and then just let it go. Um, what I also found interesting is during um, all three stages of the breathing, the, the breathing flow was uh, absolutely even the entire time that I was going through the breathing process. But I noticed that each time that I stopped, it then became not balanced, and it was one side um, or the other. Um, so I, I didn't, you know, it was just, just an observation. Um, and then the most interesting thing that took place for me was when we went to the, when we went to the triangle, um, I immediately envisioned this triangle, and it was just standing upright and a, a, a bright white light appeared at the top of the triangle. And as I began to go, whether it was going to be clockwise or counterclockwise, it actually turned into two lights 
that were going down, one going down the left side of the triangle and one going down the right side of the triangle. <clears throat> and I, I was sitting there just saying, like, like, okay, that's different. And then they actually just passed each other and just kept going around. And I was just watching and got absorbed in this light going around the triangle in two different directions. So um, that was just interesting. And that was it. That's all I have. Beautiful. The mind has obviously is getting deeper and deeper. <clears throat> what you said in the very beginning that we should prepare ourselves at least a few minutes at least the mind should remember that how I should prepare so you have the sweat pants and now the body has become warm so it's more dependent on the mind and the mood at, on, a partic on a given day in a particular situation second thing it is very good even during the three types of the breathing, if your breath is even, ultimately what is going to happen that even in normal breathing pattern, you feel that breathing is equal. And in that moment, you will see that you are looking at the world outside, but internally, you are able to maintain that calm in the poise. So I'm just, we are, I'm just giving you one, one, Tag line. Oh, let me check it. You had any, you have any, any time anyone has an anxiety. Oh, let me check the breath and let me pay attention. Let me bring it even. The modern science may say that you are substituting, you are replacing. You know, we have Christina knows we are in psychotherapy. We talk about substitution, but it is much more than that. Wonderful sharing the experiences. We all are evolving. So, how are you, Christina? Thank you. Um, today, I noticed some distraction, but then a, um, a desire for the mind to not be in control, so I could ride out the endurance. And yeah, I noticed yeah. again some, a lot of indigo light um, yeah. coming. The moment you have those lights, it means that resistant, you endured it and ultimately it results it into a new experiences. That resistance of the mind has gone. So we have to pick these very subtle threads, the way the mind is working in order to evolve. That is beautiful. How are you, Brandy? <clears throat> Fine. Um, thank you for that lesson about the uh, files. Yeah, because oh, yeah, about the other day yeah. I had something, um, I, something came up in the mind that was <laughs> from several years ago, but it presents it like it just happened. Yeah, you know, like, like, yeah, like yeah. It does. And, <clears throat> yeah, so it was, it was helpful because I think I already did have the skills that you talked about. I was like, okay, what is this? This is interesting. And rather than getting involved, so what is good? Was it good or bad? The I mean, it was mixed. Like the situation oh. at the time was good, but I guess the situation ending the way it did was bad. So you know what I mean? Like it was just the, what, but I didn't really have a thing about it once I looked at it, and my meditation was really absorbed today. Good. You see why I asked this question: whether it is good or bad. Good or bad? What happened ten years ago has no value at this time. And, but we give a value to it. When you give a value to what happened in the past, it is a delusion. Are you all getting it? It's a delusion. What happened 20 years ago? Oh, yesterday you said you are crazy. Oh, yesterday I said, no, not today. We need that level of awareness. And if that level of awareness is there, we can get rid of it. How are you, Dennis? I'm good, thank you. Uh, what I noticed in today's meditation is that uh, at the end, uh, the mind was like resting at its spot of the dust uh, space, and I was observing several attempts of the thoughts to emerge, but the mind was like not accepting them. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a reluctance to think, so the, the thought was like 
uh, trying to emerge, but then it just, just disappeared, and uh, I don't think, even know what that thought was going to be. Very good. You see, I use and, and, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And and then I also have a question about this file uh, de deletion metaphor that you used. Uh, <laughs> it is am I understanding correctly that it is not exactly our goal to completely destroy these past impressions, but rather to train the mind to not get carried away by them, because. Uh, as, as, as I am understanding, these impressions are tied to our physical um, brain and, and uh, the physical mind, and some of them are tied to the uh, subtle uh, body. Some of that that is some of them are tied to, to other bodies that probably exist out there. Is it so? Yes, you are right. You have jumped ahead of our sessions that I wanted to. I will be taking in uh, the following sessions or in the future so what happens you know uh, <clears throat> you have a night in your country I have a uh, I have a day in my country so now tell me that is the moon not present in the sunlight it is present it is still present but I don't see it so the same way that mind will continue to present to keep our essential functions active, but it will not cause any problem. That is one answer. Second answer, that that is why we have panch kosha. The body is a physical mind and mind is a subtle body. So once we understand that, so in order to continue the physical or mental existence at minimum level minus all the delusion will continue to exist. And the same way, the moonlight continues to moon and moon is continued to exist during the day also. But now the sun, the real self has taken over. Let it be. Who cares? But now we care so much. <laughs> now we care so much. How are you, uh, Barbara? <coughs> I'm very, very good, thank you. Um, I, the meditation for me today was very calm, very peaceful. I saw a lot of uh, blue, blue color. But at one point during the meditation, I felt an extreme heaviness, almost like I was sinking into my chair. Oh, good, good, sinking into the chair, but you were totally aware. Yes, yes. maintaining yes. that awareness sometime it happens, and if we continue, don't disturb those moments. It will help us to go deeper. How are you, Samir, sir? It was was very good, sir. It was very penetrating inside me. Good. Uh, today, <clears throat> triangle was very clean, very clear. Good. It has never been before like that. Ah, good. Uh, I was more relaxed and uh, I was very deep into it. Yeah. And through the triangle was, I was able to see the triangle very <coughs> so clean. It has never been like that. It is always shadowed. And I don't know why sometimes it is, it is, I think, still making a space in my heart. Yeah, it is because of the purity of the mind. And the thought image was very clear. So when the thought image is clear, what it means? You see that whenever I speak, I follow the line of the knowledge passed on to by the master. And that gives me a clarity that is what you know we our mind should move and if nothing happens leave it so the thought image 
Now, what it means by the thought image of a triangle? Now, the mind is not at all distracted. And that is why we are absorbed into that state of meditation. How are you, Terry? Can you speak? If you can. Oh, that's fine now. Yeah. Fine now. It was a deal deeper than usual. Yeah. And did see the indigo. The oh. breathing. Yeah, at the end of the, or not the end, between the breathing and the triangle. The breathing is okay. Good. But not very strong. That's okay. Yours is very energetic. Mine is not. <laughs> mine is not. So, uh, but I didn't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just tried to think about the idea of it, at least, at the very least. Okay. And then, and then, and set my intentions that, that way. Uh, and then, then, at the end, during the tri triangle, I did, uh, I did have a period with no thought, and then I had two very strange thought occurrences, uh, you know, that kind of uh, surprised me, two thoughts, so I, as, I, as soon as I realized I was having the thought, I stopped it. Uh, but in one of them, my father, I felt like I was dreaming that my father, who is deceased, took my hand. Yeah. And I just went. I just told him, no, no, Daddy, we're we're meditating right now. <laughs> let me let me go. <laughs> That's <laughs> really good. <laughs> that nature. And <laughs> uh, that didn't disturb me, but I thought it was very. Yes, uh, you see that your mind was fully aware. Don't disturb me, Dad. That also <laughs> reflects that uh, we are not caring what remains of the mind is still present. So we are only removing those remains in the mind which causes the delusion. So other essential necessities of the life cannot be deleted. Dennis, it cannot be deleted. That is another way to put it. Essential necessities you know, I'm looking at you, and you are different from me. That is also a delusion, but that delusion we need. The delusion created by the existence we need. Delusion created by our mind we need to wash out. Little deeper, uh, we will pick up at a later stage, but I'm just giving you, how are you, I will. <clears throat> uh, thank you, sir. Sir, I'm good. Uh, it is like that keeping myself free even if I have a thought or I don't have a thought. I'm always free. Beautiful. And, uh, like any impressions which is coming, I am not guided by those impressions. I have my own set and I'm walking on that. So it is like keeping myself calm and peaceful. Beautiful. That's a beautiful statement in summarizing it that I am different and separate from the mind. Whatever the mind is doing, I check it. If it is doing right, I follow. And if it follows the delusion, I stop it. So that is what the Terry did. Dad, don't disturb me. I'm doing meditation. And that is what Stephen did. That is what the Brandy. That is all you have shared your experiences. So that level of awareness 
can be achieved is it not is it not possible think of it how are you sangeeta yeah he says that no thought is disturbing and she is staying at at certain at one point so obviously it is what is what we say it is a kind of a dispassion so my friends you know last statement i'm making i received from another <coughs> you receive beautiful statements from beautiful women the men are not so beautiful you know so think of it and find me get me the answer in our next session we are pure consciousness as you say repeatedly we get bored about your saying that i said that's okay we are pure consciousness then why we have bodies why we are born through a women's body what is the point of it so you have to find the answer and you have to answer me in our next session so that i can answer to her <laughs> but this is a good point at least she started thinking <laughs> Thank you.